All right, so animating for cutscenes is a little bit different than your usual animation because normally when you're animating for games, the character is kind of in place and he's doing his animations in one place because the animations, they're modular and they kind of need to interconnect, right? We're all familiar with those types of animations, running in place and whatever, and jumping and stuff. For cutscenes, though, the character actually has to kind of move around the scene and explore the scene and do whatever they need to do. Um, kind of like I have this character here walking up to this ledge, taking a little look over the side and all that stuff. And of course, cameras are following him and everything. So yeah, it takes a little bit of a different approach. And I hope to show you that approach here in a more simplified way. I'm not going to reanimate this entire thing, <laughs> but I'll at least run through you know the first couple steps. Because I think the, the majority of the challenge comes from getting that character to, to move around in the scene in a natural way instead of the running in place like like I was saying. So first let me just kind of show you the setup I have here just because I think it's important. Not everyone sets up their rig the same way especially because you know I've, I learned this way of rigging way back in college and I've just been doing it the same way ever since and now there's all kinds of things like root motion and stuff that I couldn't even tell you about <laughs> where you know the character actually does physically move around during gameplay animations because the way it's calculated in engine um, that's a whole different thing. So anyway, this this might be a little different from what you're looking at if you're doing your own rigging or if you're looking at someone else's rig and you're trying to do the same thing. But you know, the basics is you have these controllers. They're attached to this, the skeleton in certain ways. And But the, the big difference I see a lot of people have is I, I end, up, end up having this like global controller which has everything underneath it. So I can do like, you know, I can do whatever I want with him. And you might think like, oh cool, I can just grab that and move it around as he's walking. But as you'll see in the animation, that's not actually what happens. He, he walks away from that. And the reason for that is because I want the IK to have kind of a natural movement to it. See how he kind of sticks to the ground there? And that's helpful. I'll explain it later. We'll go over it later when I'm actually animating. But that's helpful to keep the character's feet stuck to the ground in a nice way uh, as he takes each of his steps. So that's the way mine is set up. Basically, I've identified the main controllers for movement. And if you look over here, this is the outliner. It's, you know, this... This tutorial, you can use it with whatever program. This is Maya. This is a really ancient version of Maya that I still have because I, you know, I paid a billion dollars for it, so I might as well still use it. Anyway, the outliner just shows what's in the scene, essentially. So I have, you know, I have lights here. I have all the cameras. Everything in the scene is, is listed in here for me, so including all the controllers. So here's my controller set. This is just quick selection things. If you're in a different program, don't worry about it. I, I'm, I'm sure Blender has a similar thing. I'm sure Max has a similar thing or whatever other programs exist nowadays. So for my case, I have the controllers separated out this way. These are all the controllers, so I can quickly grab them and key them. I'll go over that as well when I'm actually animating. So what's important here is that I have a transformation set, and this is just what I was talking about. The set I use to grab him and move him throughout the scene any which way I want to includes the hands. These pull controllers, pull controllers are, I don't know if I had to explain all this stuff, but it might be confusing, but you know, they're the elbow controllers. The feet, of course, they're pull controllers for the, the knees. And then the root controller, which I just grabbed. And so when I grab these, it lets me do this, where I can scooch him around in the scene. So now I have free control over his movement. And yeah, I can start animating that way. If your rig has these controllers set up this way, you can go ahead and grab them and create a selection set for yourself that's quick and easy to grab that include everything you need to easily transform the main character. And with that as a, your jumping off point, we can start the actual tutorial. I'm basically just going to do a couple steps of walking and talk about key poses and just my basic animation stuff. Hopefully that's interesting and yeah, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna recycle this scene. All I did was delete the animation so we can have a fresh start. And before we do get started, I wanted to explain the layout that I'm using. This is just my animation layout that I use. So I have access to the viewport, the outliner, which I explained, and then the graph editor, which is where you'll see all the keyframes appear and the curves, and this is what we'll be dealing with curves and stuff like that. And then below that is the, the timeline and then the playhead. If you're familiar with animation software, those are, you know, that's all that is. So yeah, let's just get right into it. Basically, the first thing I do is I like to kind of clamp the beginning of the animation. Uh, so this is just kind of like preparation, I guess. Uh, just take everything. And I clamp it on the first frame. So I just key everything there. And then I go to five, six, and seven. I just key everything. 
And I also have some special uh, channels on the hands for the finger movement that I'll also clamp. This clamping is just kind of a precaution I do for all my animations. It doesn't really come into effect for the cutscenes, but doing regular animations is just a practice that I do. Because a lot of times what I find is, um, I also have some on the feet as well that I'll do. I found that when you import animations into Unity, for example, um, if you have like, you know, your standard animations, a bunch of animations in one file, um, Unity tries to transition between all the animations in a smooth way. It kind of resolves things with some kind of curve filter or something. But like if say you have one animation where it's posed one way and then the next animation starts in a different pose, Unity will try to kind of like tween between the two and it ends up messing up the ends and the beginnings of your animations, of my animations anyway. So I always do a little clamp here. So this is just a five frame clamp and then I do another clamp and then so seven is actually where we're going to be starting this animation on. So this will be the, where the pose actually begins. And for this tutorial, I don't want to get too crazy, but we're going to do at least a couple steps here and then he'll come to a stop. It'll be really similar to what I have in the scene I just showed you, except for he's only going to get, you know, so many steps and then he's just going to come to a stop. So yeah, to get started, I will take the transformation handles that I have here, all the, the, the controllers that I have and move them to his first position that he's going to be in. But I'm going to deselect one of his feet because that is the foot he's going to be um, planted with to begin. I'm going to deselect the other foot because I'm actually going to bring him down so he looks more normal, <laughs> as if that's normal. Essentially just looking for the first pose. I don't want to get too crazy with it, but um, you know, when you're doing long animations, it's good to take big steps, right? So you don't have to animate so many steps. <laughs> Uh, but since it's just, you know, a couple steps, I'm not going to get too far anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm bringing him down a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my foot roll here to kind of alleviate this stretch that he's doing. I have a little extra space because of this um, foot roll that I made. If you don't have a foot roll, you can actually just rotate the, um, the controller, right? To Just to make sure that you don't get that, like, stretched out IK. Because as soon as an IK reaches its limit, it becomes clear that it's, you know, snapping. And that can be pretty ugly. Um, I also want to I'll find a better center of gravity here, I guess. So come in a little bit like that and then push this leg out. So basically just looking for that first pose. And you can take as much time as you need for this, really. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to push this forward. He's going to be putting some more weight on his front leg. That's good. And then I'm going to bring this foot in. This foot in as well. I sort of found that with walking, it kind of looks nicer if the feet are more centered than if they're really wide, because then it looks like he's kind of straddling air as he's walking. Um, or also it looks funny because the weight distribution is wrong. You want the weight, the center of gravity to be looking kind of natural. going to offset his hands so they look like they're going back. My little elbow controller. I hope this looks good. <laughs> it's not really that often that I have to explain my process while I'm animating, so I might just <laughs> make a funny looking walk, but I hope it ends up okay. Oh, one good point to make uh, when you're, just in general, when you're animating characters is to relax the hands a little bit. So I'm going to do that now. Just relax them a little. Because uh, hands are actually aside from the face, is the second most expressive part of the human body. And I feel like when you have your hands all splayed out like that while you're doing animation, it might have an influence over the way you pose the character. Um, so yeah, just personally, I like to just make it more neutral and that way you're not really informing your pose based off of these crazy funny hands. So yeah, spend as much time as you need on these first poses because these are the key poses really. It's like what kind of makes the animation look the way it does is what the character is doing during these during these poses. I'm going to go into the spine. I have a spine set up here. Just relax him a little bit. Make him look like he's leaning forward a little bit more. So he's leaning into the walk. No, that's not bad. And so we can call this done for now. Obviously, you can spend as much time as you want on these. Uh, but for now, for the first pose, I think that's fine. I'm going to take all the controllers and just key 
again. Okay, so now essentially we have the character popping <laughs> into that first frame. So we could just say, like, just like my other cutscene, it starts with him walking. This cutscene, we can just start with him walking too. And so because of that, we don't need him going from a, a standstill to, to moving because, you know, he was off frame for that particular cutscene. <clears throat> anyway, so on to the next step. The next step, I'm just going to time it out, like, in my head, I guess. So, like, I hit... The way I usually do this is I hit play and I kind of time it out in my head the, how long I think the step should take. It's kind of a rhythm that you make up in your head as you are animating. So, so we're going to say about about uh, frame 20 is when he should take the next step. Maybe I'll adjust that later. Who really knows? But I'm going to go ahead and select all my transform keys again, or all my transform controllers, and deselect that foot, and then just bring him forward. Oops. That was the wrong foot, this foot. The foot that's gonna stay, it will leave there. And I'm just gonna line it up again, just so it's kind of, I have a matching point. And so I'll bring that foot forward, remove this foot roll, and then I'll give the other foot its foot roll. And now we're back kind of inverted on the other side of the walk. Maybe make that step a little further. And then of course we switch the hands. This one forward. There. That's pretty good. So just going to key that to make our second pose. So now that we have that, we're just going to do essentially the same thing as this pose, but we're going to do it up here a little bit. And I kind of want it to be the same distance here. So I'll go to just kind of eyeball it. And then this is where our other step is going to be. So essentially doing the same thing again. I'm going to grab our controllers here and deselect this foot that'll stay still and pull him ahead, match up those feet, and then put this foot ahead. So yeah, once you get the first few poses, it's really quick to do these other poses. Because you're really, I mean, I'm just adjusting the feet and then the hands, and that's it for now, right? Because I've already posed him and his, like, you know, his spine is the way I want it to be. His, the, the height of his hips and everything is all already set up. His, his pull controllers for the elbows are already set. So at this point, I'm just kind of swinging back and forth the um, the hands and feet. I think that's pretty good. Key it all again. There. So now we kind of have, <laughs> you know, it's almost there, right? I think I'll have him take just one more step here before stopping. And then I guess since it's his last step, it's going to be a like a shallower step. So I won't bring that foot quite as far forward. And then just the same old thing. Moving his hands and stuff around. And then key everything. Okay, so he's walking. And now for his last pose, we're just going to have him coming to a stop. So I guess since he already took a shallow step there, it'll be kind of a quicker step just to match the feet, and that'll be him reaching his standing pose. So I will... Essentially the same thing, grab everything, leave that one foot, bring everything forward just to match that foot. Bring his foot in. I guess you wouldn't stand like that, so he's got to bring his feet. This is going to be kind of, we're going to have to figure this out, but he's going to end up with his feet like this, right? So yeah, basically just finding the good standing pose, whatever it may be and not worrying too much about what's going to happen in between just yet. I'm actually going to have him kind of looking down just for a little more of an effect here. So basically throughout the animation, he's going to see something on the ground, right? And then as he's walking, his head is going to continue looking down. So that's just kind of a little feature I added in the other animation and might as well do it here as well. And I kind of want him to have, I want him to have a more comfortable stance there. Now that's fine. <laughs> everything is fine. Now we key everything once more. This will be our final key pose. And now if we watch it play back, it looks funny. <laughs> but it'll look much nicer. Like basically the biggest thing here is the feet 
aren't lifting off the ground, right? And maybe some of the timing could be adjusted and stuff like that. So I'm going to come back here. I want to adjust this, um, these animation curves because if you kind of look at it, if you pay attention to his center, he kind of stops at every frame. But you want him to follow through. So I'm going to take all these keys, all our keyframes, and I'm just going to, let's think. The first one is essentially starting off of nothing. So I want to just make that a, a, an immediate start. So I'm just going to make this, um, what do they call it, linear? <laughs> so it's a linear tangent, essentially, um, so, because it's starting from nothing. It's not starting from another point. It's just kind of starting. So to make sure everything's moving at the same pace, everything lines up, um, I'm, I'm just breaking those tangents there. Everything else, though, I want to do this um, kind of automatic tangent, which just kind of rounds the tangent to the best of its ability there. And let's see. I suppose it was kind of already sort of doing that, but just in case to remove any doubt that it was, um, that there were any flat tangents there. If a, if a tangent was flat, it would look like this. It, he would like really come to a stop there. So you'll see him really stop there. Um, so to remove any doubt that there's any tangents like that in the animation, I'm just going to automatic automate them, um, which kind of just rounds the curves out. So he follows through more naturally. And then, yeah, comes to a stop there. Okay, so the first thing is just the in-betweens. We want to fix the feet. I usually go through and do the biggest things first. And to me, the most obvious thing is that the feet need to at least be lifting, right? So we'll take... I'll do one side at a time. I'll do the one that's starting. And this is really, since we already have the key poses in place, it's really just a matter of adding a new keyframe here where it's controlling the Y movement. Just move it up a little bit. So now he's going from each pose, which has his feet grounded, but in between we're adding this like little lift. Might be too much actually. Let's just doesn't have to be crazy. And then he's going to skip a foot because he plants it. And then the next one is the same. So you could even just copy, copy and paste those. So now he's kind of just dragging one of his feet behind. <laughs> and then this part here, I'm going to mess around with this because this is like, he's got to put his weight on one foot and then put his weight on the, the other foot. You know, he's got to make, because he's separating his feet, there kind of has to be something. So let's just do the walking animation first. So now let's go to the, the next foot. Do the same exact thing, but it's inverted. So the first step actually comes now. Just key that. I'm just going to raise it by hand. Why not? And then this one, we can raise this one up too. And there. It's going to look funny. There's going to be some sliding, but we'll fix it. So for the walking, he's at least lifting his feet up now, right? But I also want to adjust the, um, like the Y movement of his upper body because right now he's kind of floating. He could balance a glass of water on his head as he walked, right? <laughs> we don't want that. We want it to be labored, right? Because he's undead. But every person, you know, they're going to have a bounce as they walk. So let's see. I guess I'll include the hands in this as well just because I don't want them to be moving around or I don't want them to diverge too much from his body position. So let's see what happens here. As he's stepping, he's going to be going up. And when he sets, steps down, he's going to be going back down, right? So let's grab the hands and the root. Grab the Y. <clears throat> just so we're seeing the right things here. And I'm just going to be messing around with the Y position. I'm going to leave the Y in the, um, in the key poses because I think that's fine. I think there might be enough play room, like wiggle room for us to move up in between um, for this pose to be the downward pose. So let's just see. Because sometimes you lift it up and there's a lot of stretching with the IKs and stuff. So I'm just going to key that and we'll see all these guys come up. And so now he's actually, you know, standing up on that leg as he goes. Maybe it's a little too tall. That's fine. I'm just going to copy and paste for for ease. So that's the same. Actually, that might have been a bad move because the hands are actually always in a different position. So I'm just going to do it by hand. And I guess 
he's like standing up at this end point. So I'm not going to touch it right now. The, the, the final part where he's actually standing is going to be its own little, little isolated thing. So I'll just do that afterwards. Okay. So he's got his Bob a little bit, right? So I want to emphasize it. I usually do a little bit of, um, secondary motion with his spine because his, he's got a lot of weight coming down on his, <clears throat> on his center. So all that weight up of his upper body, I'm going to have kind of come down in a delay, um, as he's, as he's moving up and down with that, with his steps. Um, you'll see it's gotta be offset. So it's going to be this uh, X axis here and it needs to be offset. So I'll, I'll kind of explain, I'll try to, I'll try to explain, <laughs> um, essentially as he's going up, I want him, his spine to be hanging down. And then as he's falling down, I want him to be his spine to be rotating back up. And so there's going to be kind of a, um, secondary motion there. So I'll try to I'll actually, I think it's, it's like going to be right here. It's kind of, it's kind of a matter of feeling it out. I don't, I don't know if I've really, if I really have this down or not. Anyway, I'm going to key all the spines. Just like I said, he's going to be delaying. So he's going to be hanging down and then this comes down. Is that right? <laughs> Let's see. Maybe I have it back or maybe I have it. Um, yeah. Okay. So I actually have to do something else. Hold on. So it's going to be in between each of his steps. He's going to have this whole thing take place. So in between here, it's going to go up. Well, up on the graph, but down, he's going to curl down. And then just before the end, it's going to do that. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> it's all a matter of feeling it out. Well, for me, it is because I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not an expert or anything, but I do it until it looks good, right? So I think I can just copy these, come out to this point here, paste them again. And so as I pasted it, this keyframe rounded itself back out. So now I have this nice wave that goes contrary to his, um, to, uh, to this wave here. Let me see if I can get them isolated together. It's kind of tough to see rotation and translation in the same because <laughs> look at what it does. Um, but for every time he steps, there's actually an up and down motion and then it flows directly into the next step essentially. So I'm just going to copy that through. I think that's working out <laughs> definitely, um, a matter of kind of playing around with the way it looks. And then he's got one more here copy and paste it. And I'm actually going to delete these because <clears throat> they're kind of making the animation a little less smooth just by having them there. They were just little placeholders and now we don't need them. So now we can kind of see what it looks like. It's all right, right? It's not too bad to help that. Cause you know, now he looks like he's kind of stiff in the neck cause his neck isn't moving. Um, we can do the, the same thing for the neck and the head joints but it's easier because it needs to run contrary to these curves, which is essentially what we already have going on for the root because the root, it's transitional point is right in the center. So all we have to do is go into the center and we're going to be rotating in the same way, but inverse to what the spine is doing. So we're going to come to about 13 here, the middle, we could just line it up with the root. This is one that I always have to play with because I don't really know which way I'm going to go down. I'm just going to guess that it needs to go down. It was okay. So it does look, it looks right. So let's just take a look at it on the graph here. I guess I can show you the way it's working after it's, after I've done the neck, I can, I can show you. Um, so going about a middle, the middle again, give him that same downward head, go into the middle again, paste that. Okay. So now, his head is kind of going down kind of as you'd expect as he steps, it goes down. So it's all secondary motion. The, um, the root was driving the motion, the main motion up and down. The spines were secondary motion. They were following up that motion. So they were on a delay and then that head and neck were on a delay from the spine, which just means you can just recenter it again to make it easy on yourself. So I can show you side by side here. 
Um, here is the spine. And in between the spine movement is where the head does its final transitional pose. It's kind of hard to explain, but I hope you can at least see it here. It is essentially, you know, delaying the move, the same movement, but on a delay. Um, so we get kind of a secondary movement there. And I kind of want a little more of an exaggeration there. So I'm just going to take this head and neck, grab the axes here. And I'm going to kind of off-center them, I guess. Let's see. Now that way he goes up a little bit more now. And I still want to make it a little more exaggerated, so I'm going to just stretch these out like this. You can get crazy on this, and it's easy to make it look like he's like listening to music while he's walking, right? <laughs> Um, but it's, it, it adds to kind of the interest of the animation. I, I tend to go more exaggerated, but having a subtlety too, like it makes it look a little more professional, right? A little more understated, more realistic as well. Okay. So we have him walking pretty good, right? Uh, and you can kind of see like the power of doing these, these poses is because you've done your poses. Now you just need to tell the curves or the program what's happening in between. And because we have curves to work with, it just finds the the best transition between those those three points. So the more intersections you do between the main poses, the more detail you can get in the animation. And so that's essentially what I'm trying to say. Whether it's like taking a step, or whether it's um, you know starting to jump or jumping or falling down or anything like that, it's all the same principle. As you're doing the main poses, and then you're informing the curves, what happens just in between those poses, just to make it look more coherent. Doing things in layers like this also can help speed things up. Like I just did all those steps, all the spine movement for those steps pretty quickly because I can just copy and paste the same thing over and over again. Um, another thing I want to do with the spine is as he steps forward, I want him to lean into the step a little bit, which is just another rotation. I'm going to grab the spine. It's the Y rotation. I'm going to make him turn into the step. So I'm going to actually start with this very first pose, this very first point right here. And I'm actually, I'm actually just going to animate directly on the, um, the main poses because that's where he would be leaning in. So just a subtle rotation towards his step. And I'm going to key that. And then over here, we're going to do inverted. So I'm just going to pull this down. I don't want to go too crazy. And then we can just copy the same values over and over and over again, like this. Let's see what happens here when he's going to stop. I guess you still want him leaning towards it a little bit, right? Is that okay? Let's see. That looks wrong for some reason. Why does that look wrong? Did I do it wrong? No, that's got to be right. Oh, it's wrong because, okay, never mind. Okay, so we're not following. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh, it's so hard to make tutorials. Okay, so we just inverted it. Just got to switch it around. You want him to lean in. I was thinking you lean into the step, right? That makes sense. But no, you want to swerve towards where his, you know, his arms are going because that's where he's balancing from. So just invert it. Oops, what's happening here? There. There. Okay, so that looks <laughs> sheesh. That looks right. I was questioning my own sanity for a minute. That looks a little better. He's got some swagger now, right? Um, one issue, though, is that on each of these poses, he's looking in a funny direction. So I'm actually just going to fix the neck as well over here. And this is just a matter of going to each of the poses and correcting it on the y axis. So he's looking forward and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? He can be looking wherever he wants. Maybe there's a pose where you want him to be looking off to the side a little bit, right? What if that was kind of nice? He's looking at something over there <laughs> then he goes back to looking at the ground. You could do stuff like that. I'm not going to do that right now though. <laughs> I'm just going to make it symmetrical. Bring this down, bring this up just centering it on the camera, essentially, or wherever I imagine forward is. 
So we have this one just a little bit to fix. And he looks down. Okay, so I also want to fix that looking down for right now because he just does it the last frame. That's kind of funny. So I'm going to select that and just kind of, like I still want him to have that head bob, but I want it while he's looking down or while he's continuing to look further and further down as he's getting closer, whatever he's looking at, right? So he's going to be looking at something here, which is about there. We can kind of just try to remember that in our, in our head. And so we'll just start from the very beginning. So he, we're going to gradually move up to this point up here while still keeping the head bob. Let's see. Let's see if that worked. Did that work? Yeah, so he keeps his head bob, but we're making kind of a, a ramp up to that point while keeping these little, these little dips in there because that... We don't want to lose that. There, now he, he's looking down. It looks like he's not looking there, and that looks better. Looks a little stiff. What's happening? I don't know. Just kind of have to work it out, I guess. Like, there's definitely a lot of stuff that goes into... <laughs> it's not bad. I mean, he's got to have some control of his neck, right? He can't just be totally loosey-goosey. There. That's not bad. Oh, you know what I should actually do before? I should also be rotating the root joint, just so there's some some reach with his, with his hip there. I'll add a little bit in there, but I'm not going to get too crazy because I've already... Let's take a look at this. I guess I can kind of meet it halfway, I guess. Let's just grab these low points. These have to be low. I don't want to get too crazy. Wait, this is... No. Yeah. I'm not going to go too crazy because I already kind of... Does that even work? I think in this case the root should be going the inverted way. Because he's reaching with his leg at that point. Yeah. I know. I could also animate with the, um, you know, I have an actual hip controller in here. <laughs> you can actually see his his hips in there. That's kind of funny. Um, which I, I would do that kind of reaching, and I would I would do more animation with his hip, but unfortunately, a little behind the scenes, um, the way I've rigged the character up to this point, Unity doesn't recognize the hip joint for some reason. So there are, is no hip rotation in the game at all even though I, maybe in some of the earlier animations I used the hip, it's um, vestigial now because Unity doesn't see it for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, the next, the next big thing is the in-betweens for the hands. So let's see. Since each pose is kind of like, it's the same as the leg, you just want to go in-between for the hands and just kind of figure out what's going on there. Sometimes it works out okay. Like, honestly, let's see. Like, it's not, it's not terrible, right? But sometimes what you want is a little bit of secondary movement with the wrists and stuff, with the hands. So I'm going to go in here and do a nice in-between where there's kind of a, a little delay on the hand. You'll kind of, I hope, hopefully you can see once I do it. This is generally what I do. Like as he's moving his hand forward, we're going to leave, oops, that's not his hand. We're going to just pull it back a little bit and also pull the wrist back. And I hope that this comes through like in the recording, but basically it gives it a little delay. And then the next time you do an in-between for the hand, you do the opposite where you don't have to necessarily push it too far back, but you want the, the wrist to go back the other direction. And so you kind of get a swaying, a swaying motion. Was that not enough? What's going on here? Yeah, there's more of like a sway. I don't know. Sort of. It's not. It's, it's a little janky right now, but you, do, you you can spend some time and refine that little sway that happens there. Uh, hopefully you can see that. But that's generally what I do. I'll go from each each point doing that during the in between moments, it's, um, and then he's gonna do the exact same thing coming forward. Uh, 
just add a little delay there as he's coming back and forth just to make it look like it's you know we have like air resistance wind resistance or whatever happening there and that's the final one so i'm just going to do a little i don't know we can mess around a little bit more with that afterwards this is kind of the final the final pose here so it's going to be a little bit more specific maybe he'll open his hands up a little bit i don't know anyway that's that hand we're going to do the same exact thing on the other side so it'll just be inverted so at this point he's already moving backwards so we're going to have a little bit of a little air resistance there and then on the way back same thing it's a little thing right a little touch that you can exaggerate if you want and then now it's coming back so i'm going to have it do a little hang time there and then this it's kind of a more subtle movement because his hands already sort of in the next pose but i guess i'll add a little bit a little bit here and put it on the same frame just match up the frames to make my life easier later I won't do too much, but I'll at least do a little rotation in the animation and maybe finish on a pose that's a little more a little more congruent. There. That's okay. Very simple stuff to do once you break it down, I think. So let's see how we're looking so far. He's definitely looking a little springy in his foot, <laughs> right? Kind of like he's tiptoeing. And that's because the um, the foot roll is needs to be timed differently. Let's see. Let's check. I'll I'll start here actually. Probably something to do with yeah. It's the um, it's just a matter of timing all these things. So essentially, let's see. This is going down as it's trying to lift up. So I'm just gonna scooch it over. Scooch both these over. Let's see how many. Just to smooth it out. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Essentially, the foot roll was pulling the leg down, and but the leg was moving up. It's, I guess I run into these every once in a while with foot roll stuff, little issues like this, because <laughs> it is just an extra layer of complexity to the rig, but um, that seems to have worked, so I'll just do that over here as well. Um, I can do it here at least. Is that better? It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> It's fine for now. I also have to do the rotation here too, so let's do that. Maybe that'll <clears throat> help relieve some of the problems here. So while he's lifting, he is rotating up, right? No, he's rotating down. Rotating down and then the next step, he's lifting, rotating down. Does that look a little better? Looks fine. And a little extra detail I like to do for the the, um, the rotation here is like offsetting it by a few frames and adding in a little extra um, a little extra lift to the foot before it steps down. So we know it's going to step down on twenty on the key, but I want a little before that for it to lift up. So I'm going to scooch this over. How much do I want to scooch it though? Let's see that's okay right so where he should be stepping his foot is still up let's see so you get a nice like step kind of liked it quick like that though let's do a quick yeah so as he steps on that key point his foot is still up and then while he's sitting still while that foot is sitting still it still finishes this like stepping point here so I'm going to do that for all the steps because I think it looks nice. Do it to about there. Is that the same distance? Maybe. Scooch this over. And now we'll add that little detail on this side over here for his step. So like, I don't know, three, two or three frames before the actual footfall. We'll raise his foot up and then scooch it over. Is it two frames or one frame? I don't know. I don't know what I did for the other foot. What did I do? Just two. And we'll do that same thing here. And don't worry about the sliding. We'll fix that once we get to that point. But I want this foot here at the very end to also do that, that little step. 
All right, so I feel like the walking animation, not so bad, right? <laughs> Obviously, you could tweak these things forever. It seems like his leg gets hung up there at the beginning. But hopefully you get the idea how to fill in these in-betweens for in between the, um, the actual poses that we made. So let's just approach this here. So like logically what actually has to happen is he plants this foot down, his left foot, and that foot just stays still until the other foot can step down. And then this left foot is then going to go ahead and take an extra step. So we'll have three steps here. So this step, I'm going to freeze its translations because it shouldn't be moving. I'm going to actually treat, freeze everything. I'm going to freeze it where it was here. So we're just going to copy and paste these values, I think. Let's see. Let's see what happens when I do that. Nothing happened. Oh, here. There. I just grabbed the wrong thing. Okay, now the rotation we're going to have to fix because... There, just put that back at zero. Is that where it was? It's, it actually doesn't look too weird for it to rotate on its heel like that. So I'm just going to tone it down a little bit. We'll see what happens when I do the third step. So he steps down, boom. He steps with this foot, boom. And then when that foot's settled, we're going to have another quick pose over here where we put the foot where we think it needs to be. Because right now he's leaning onto one side, right? So he needs to scooch over a little bit. I'm just going to scooch the foot like this. And just key everything. There. And so now we have a little end moment where, where he steps, he finishes his last step on that foot, and then he adjusts this foot. So we're going to have to move around a little bit of the top body as well to offset the, his balance because right now he's, he's putting all his weight on his, his right foot, but his weight is actually kind of over to the left. So we'll have to move that around a little bit. Um, is that good timing though? Let's time it out. That's pretty good. Okay. So he steps down. Boom. This foot, it can't just slide across the ground. So I'm going to add a little bit of lift to that foot in the way of this Y translation. Just a touch. Right? That's too much. <laughs> Actually, no, because I'm also going to rotate it. Just watch. I'll rotate it down because that's kind of how the foot moves as it coasts across the ground, right? And about that rotation that we had, maybe I'll remove it. I'm going to remove that rotation from here. And instead, I'm going to put that all here. So he rotates to there, but I'm also going to add a little, a little hang time. So as you'll see, does it actually look like anything? Let's see. Yeah, you can do stuff like that. <laughs> so his final step, his foot has a little hang time there. Do you see where it kind of, it's still kind of rooted to that point and it trails off and then <laughs> you, you see it. It's hard to explain, but you see it. All right, so that's good. He stops. I think now is really just a matter of doing the upper body, getting the upper body to move where it needs to be. So for this, he's going to step down on his right foot, so he needs his center of gravity to be on the right, right? So I'm just going to move the root for now. Just move it a little bit there. And then it's going to move back to center whenever he steps with his last foot here. It'll come back to zero. Mm. Okay. I'm going to move his arms at the same time. And then I can always offset the arms after, but we're going to move the arms over at the same time. So I'm going to scooch these over here. 
And then on 70, they're going to come right back to where they were, wherever I'd like them to be. And if I want to, I can kind of see how they kind of sway to them there. I kind of like that. I can do the same for this part too, where they kind of finish, they kind of finish a little later. Yeah, scooch it over. There, see how they kind of finish a little later? <laughs> there. And then I also want the <clears throat> the spine and stuff to kind of move in a similar way. So let's do that now. I'm actually going to key everything at 70 just so I have my, my key pose there. Because it used the key pose was at a different key. And now I'm, I'm moving it. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to key everything right now. Just so we have those keys there when we need them. That just basically gives me an endpoint, so I can just add things in between, and it, it will return to that point when I'm done. Um, the, the the arms don't need that on the on this axis necessarily. I'm gonna remove that there, just to keep it smooth. So now the spine. This is just like when he was bobbing up and down. He's following the root, and so now that the root the root starts moving left from here, or starts moving right, sorry, from here. So in between that, I'm gonna have the spine rotating right because that's just how gravity is, right? And then we'll have this go the other way as he's, as he's kind of balancing out. And then just like with the hands, I'm gonna give it a little bit of, a little bit of um, delay so it moves after everything's done moving. I'm gonna push it out a little further and I'm also, I'm going to push the hands out a little further because I think the hands should be <clears throat> the hands should be the things that that finish last like this because they're lighter there and you can do more like you can have it go back and forth as well like maybe if you have more more time you can have the hands come back to a little rest I guess I'll just do that now just like this oops have them come back down a little bit just to find a better spot there. Like this, see? Very subtle. But yeah, so they're the last thing to move. Is that necessary? <laughs> Let's see. Maybe that's not necessary. That might be too much. Let's bring it up a little more. Bring the other one up. Could also go a little faster, I think. Yeah, it's okay, right? It doesn't need it to be there, but it's a little extra looks just way there. And then of course, we also need to incorporate the head and neck into this whole thing. So I'm gonna grab the rotate Z for the head and neck, and I'm just gonna have it following that movement of the spine. On, on an even further delay, right? Because it is secondary to the, the spine movement. So here, it goes that way. And then like way out here, it goes the other way. Maybe the head is where it needs more bobble. And then somewhere around here, it returns to center. We don't want it, we don't want it too loosey-goosey, right? Because it always gets kind of, car kind of cartoony. It's a little slow. Needs to start later. Yeah, that's okay like that, right? That's okay. All right, one last little touch I want to add here is just a little more sway in the in the hands as it comes to that, that final pose there. Uh, and that's what rotation is that? Is it the Z? Yeah. It's very tiny little detail, but let's do it anyway. So as he's moving from here, I guess it's more or less from here. We want him to, want the hand to kind of float that way, just a touch. That's okay, just a very subtle touch, right? <laughs> and I can do the same on the other side. It was right about there. So I'm gonna scooch him over one pull it down about the same as the other one right 
There, a little subtle little touch, just for fun. <laughs> Okay, I think that looks okay. And yeah, so you, obviously you can always go into more detail with these sorts of things. You can always spend more time on the animation, getting everything nice, adding little little touches here and there. Um, but I hope that at least this gives you a nice understanding of the kind of pose-to-pose -pose animation technique where you get the, the big poses in there and then you go in in between and, and fill out the blanks just to get the, the detail that you're looking for or get those, you know, get those little moments that you want to happen to happen. So yeah, that's how I do the cutscene animations for the game. Um, obviously they get more complex than just walking around, <laughs> unfortunately, but this is generally the technique that's used, right? Like if I need the character to do anything, I start in one pose, I move to the next pose and I go through the whole animation that way. I get a nice timing that I, that I like. Um, in the pose to pose. And then when I'm satisfied with that, however big or however small the animation was, however complex, however varied the, the, um, the detail was, or however varied the, the poses were, I go through it all that way. And then I go through it again in the in-betweens, step-by-step, all the in-betweens. And I, I keep going over in passes, kind of like if you're rendering something, you do it in passes. Um, yeah, go through from, from big details to small details. And I think that this, this sort of technique, this kind of approach to animation for cutscenes in particular makes the whole process so much more easy than if you were to do, you know, go in every other frame and try to get the poses at all times. Like you really want to do broad strokes and that, that goes for any, any type of art, any type of animation or really anything. You want to start big and, and work your way to the small details. So yeah, I hope, I hope this helped understand some things. I definitely like to do some more tutorials like this in the future. Uh, I also like to be better at making tutorials and speaking in general. So I think this is good practice for me. On that side of things, I find myself struggling just making this simple tutorial, trying to explain myself as I'm working because I've been working in silence for so long, right? Like I don't have to explain myself. I just do it. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was nice to, to, to get to do a, a, a tutorial again. And it's nice to have a, you know, a platform to share these sorts of tools, learning tools with people. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.